When you picture the desert, what do you imagine? I didn't see the desert for the first time until two years ago, and I pictured a barren landscape. It was hot, it was rocky, devoid of life, and there might be sand dunes, cacti, scorpions. And while I found some of this to be true, every desert that I visited has been distinctly different than the previous. They're all lush and full of life. There's splotches of color, yellow, purple. There's birds, crickets. Some have mountains while some are perfectly flat. They're really amazing and there's a whole spectrum of them. You can't say you've been to one and say you've been to them all. It's Sunday morning, and I'm heading into the town of Ajo, Arizona. That's A-J-O, in case you're wondering how it was spelled. I'm just gonna pop in, pop out, and then head south to Oregon Pipe Cactus National Monument to check it out. This is the plaza at the town center of Ajo, Arizona, and it's stunning. It's Sunday, so all the shops are closed right now, but I'm just enjoying walking around and having my coffee. Ajo, Arizona popped up next to a prosperous copper mine in the early 20th century. In 1985, the mine closed for good, the population diminished, but the town that remains is still very interesting and very beautiful. I feel like it's an undiscovered gem on the cusp of revival, so definitely come here and explore the surrounding desert, which is also stunning. Not to mention, it's warm out year-round, so I could be quite comfortable here.
For lunch, I'm doing chicken a la king over jasmine rice. It's 2 p.m. and I'm already settled in for the evening at Oregon Pipe Cactus National Monument. I'm staying at a small fee campground, costs $12 a night. I have a picnic table, vault toilet, and it's a trailhead for hiking too, so I expect to do some hiking tomorrow. This was a bad idea. This is pretty typical for national parks and monuments, but they don't allow vehicle supported camping just anywhere. Oregon Pipe has two places, Alamo Canyon, which has four primitive sites and a vault toilet, which is where we're at, and Twin Peaks Campground, which is right by the visitor center. And there are 208 sites suitable for RVs and they're all clumped together. I like Alamo Canyon. Honest to goodness, crystal clear flowing water in Alamo Canyon. Oh yeah. <laughs> All these months doing my best to avoid cold weather and finally, finally I found summer. An old homestead. Oops. The water was so clear that I thought that was a dry rock. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's nice and cool too. That's pretty much it. The Alamo Canyon hike, 
1.9 miles one way, and then it ends at that old corral. I had no idea it was going to be such a refreshing hike. This is great. I'm going to let my feet dry out and then head on back to the Jeep. It's noon on Monday. I'm going to head out, but I'm looking at the visitor guide for Oregon Pipe Cactus National Monument. And there's some scenic drives, so I think I'm going to follow one of these on the way out. Pozo Nuevo Road. I don't know what hard means, but I'm going to check it out. The visitor center has great water, so I'm topping off the Nemo Helio. I get a lot of use out of this in warm weather. This is Puerto Blanco Road, in the southern portion of Oregon Pipe Cactus National Monument. It's part of a scenic loop and it's a rough dirt road. It's not technical, but it's very rocky. In a short distance, I'm going to be branching off onto Pozo Nuevo Road, which passes through to the north. Pozo Nuevo Road, the one that's listed as high clearance four-wheel drive. I'm about 10 miles in and it really hasn't been that demanding at all. I imagine it can be in wet conditions. I pass through some washes and through some soft sand, but otherwise it's very well groomed. The old Bates Ranch. I'm not going around opening any cabinets or anything because I think it's prudent to assume that the walls are filled with bees. I don't think that sign outside was kidding. I hear buzzing everywhere, so I'm gonna tread lightly. It's Monday night and I set up camp outside of Ajo, Arizona. I had to backtrack a little bit after Oregon Pipe Cactus National Monument and Ajo has great boondocking all around. I didn't have enough daylight to explore new territory so I'm going to spend the night here and then in the morning I'll keep pushing eastward.
It's Tuesday morning and I'm traveling east toward Tucson. I'm gonna stop at a grocery store in Tucson, resupply, and then continue driving east toward Really big change of plans. I was traveling eastbound on Highway 86 toward Tucson and Death Wobble came back with a vengeance. Come on. Come on, man. It's the first time I experienced it since I left Summit in Prescott a couple weeks ago, and things went bad. I need to get a tow. The steering that Summit took care of is still rock solid, so this is good. However, on the track bar bracket on the front axle of my Jeep, I discovered that this metal should be connected to this other metal. And same here. So I've got a track bar bracket that's breaking off and that sidelines the Jeep. I was driving down the highway, I hit some bumps, the front end started wobbling gently at first, but then it became violent. And then it got crunchy, made it crunchy, if that makes any sense. So I pulled over here in this gas station, discovered that issue with the bracket, put some calls in, and I've got a truck coming. I'm not happy about it, but there's nothing I can do. When something like this happens, you just have to roll with it, and that's exactly what I'm doing. It's Tuesday night, around 7 p.m. My ride is almost here, so what we're gonna do is load the Jeep onto his trailer and then make the four hour drive north back to Prescott, Arizona. I've informed Summit Jeep Company and sent them pictures of the issue. They know that I'm coming. So tomorrow morning, we should be able to hit the ground running with repairs. didn't even have to cut it. <laughs> <laughs> so majority of these were fresh cracks where it broke, but I could see here in the center, it looks like it might have been cracked prior. Yeah. See the little rust build up right there? Yeah. Then the rest looks really fresh. That's a new one, the synergy we're gonna replace it with. Cool. So yep. Get that all welded on there and we're adjustable on the track bar also. I don't think that's all the way through. Nope, that was through. My goal isn't to make more work for you today.
4.15 on Wednesday afternoon and my business at Summit has concluded. It's almost like nothing ever happened. It's awesome. But now I have some other business to attend to and that is pizza. Like nothing ever happened at all. The past 36 hours was an unexpected adventure. I never expected to be back in Prescott and as much as I love Summit and their work, I didn't expect to be back there either, but they did a great job today. That pizza was from Bill's in downtown Prescott, which is apparently the place to go for pizza. It was called the Kevin Bacon, and it was topped with all kinds of wonderful things. There was olive oil, a hint of garlic, feta cheese, bacon, sliced tomatoes, pepperoni, and uh, another cheese blend, and I loved it. Alright, the Jeep is nice and level. Gonna spend the night here. It's Thursday night and I'm camped at the side of a BLM road near Tombstone, Arizona. I didn't pick up the camera much today because I spent all day traveling trying to make up the ground I lost after my track bar bracket broke. But this is roughly where I wanted to wrap up the week. The only difference is I wanted to explore Tombstone a little bit in the surrounding area, but that's going to have to wait until next week. Huge shout outs this week. First to my friend Mike, who spent hours driving to rescue me from the side of the road. And second to Summit Jeep Company, who took me in the very next day and got the Jeep sorted brilliantly. It's got a new track bar bracket, they did a full review of everything, and it's soaking up the bumps better than it ever has. When they did their first review, there was no visible crack or issue with the track bar bracket. I figure, since I've been enduring death wobble for so long, all the stress of the front axle wobbling back and forth goes against that factory bracket. So imagine a paper clip when you bend it back and forth really fast, the metal eventually gets fatigued. And this past week I provoked it and that was that. This week really went off the rails, but I made the best of it and I tried to keep a positive attitude throughout. The pizza really helped but my current feeling is frustrated. And that's just how I feel right now, at this moment. I got the death wobble fixed, the track bar bracket repaired, and now it's making some strange noise under the hood. It's not the issue that bothers me as much as the increasing frequency of the issues. At 120,000 miles, is this still the appropriate vehicle for what I'm doing? Should I be looking into other options, maybe source another JK and swap my gear over? 
I don't know. This has not let me down yet, aside from what happened this week. I might be making a mountain out of a molehill, but I need to give this some thought. But I'm going to call that a wrap for this week. Thank you guys, as always, for following along, and I'll catch up with you again next Friday.